you might have noticed the connection between the number of bases and the dimension of a system. For example, in the R1, the one-dimensional space, you have one standard basis, which is 1. And for two-dimensional space, you have two standard bases, 1, 0, and 0, 1. And for three-dimensional space, you have three standard bases, which is the 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So from here, can you deduce the connection between the number of standard bases and the dimension of the space? Well, it seems that for all real number, the dimensions of the real number is actually referred to the number of standard bases here. So you've had, if you have a three-dimensional space, then you have a three bases. Or in another word, if you have three bases, then you have a three-dimensional space. For the dimension of a polynomial equation, it actually depends on the highest order of power here. So let's say this is a second order of polynomial equations, which means that the n is 2. So the dimension of this polynomial equation is actually 2 plus 1, which is 3. So the three bases here are actually corresponding to x raised to the power of 0, x raised to the power of 1, and x raised to the power of 2. So for whatever polynomial you have, the dimension will be n plus 1 which means that the order plus 1. So the dimension for matrix is actually the multiplication of the size. So the number of rows multiplied with the number of columns. So remember from the previous lesson, if you have a 2 by 2 matrix, so this is 2 and this is 2, so you end up with a 4, which means that you have a dimension of 4 and you need 4 bases for this matrix of a size of 2 by 2. Similarly for a matrix with size 3 by 3, you should have a nine standard bases for the matrix. Now let's look at the dimension of a solution space. If you have been given a system of linear equations and how are you going to decide how many bases you will have or what is the dimension of the solution space here? So the first step you need to do is actually to convert everything into the augmented matrix form and then you reduce it into the row action form. So based on this row action form, can you predict the type of solution this homogeneous system possesses? Well, maybe using the degree of freedom, the number of unknowns and the number of independent equations. So just based on the inspection, I can see that we have a three leading one here. So we have three independent equations and we have one, two, three, four, five, five columns here, which means that we have more unknowns compared to the number of equations we have and most probably we'll have infinitely many solutions which means that we have a free variable so to solve this system of linear equations to find out the dimension of the solution space of this system of linear equations the first step is to identify the pivot column so pivot positions are the leading one entries and the associated column is known as the pivot column for this case so this is the reduced or the row action form from the previous system of linear equations and the first entry here this entry and this entry they are the pivot columns because they are the leading ones ones along the this row the second row and the third row so in this case the pivot columns are the first the third and the fourth columns corresponding to the variable x1 x3 and x4 and the second step is to identify the free variables so in the previous step, we have identified the pivot columns. So these, pi these pivot columns are actually not a free variables. That depends on other variables. While the non-pivot columns, correspondingly with x2 and x5, they are the free variables. So now we have identified uh, what are, which are the free variables here. In this case, it's x2 and x5. So the third step is to solve the homogeneous system. So just look back, just refer back to your previous basic example equation here. So y equals to mx plus c. We know that y is the depending variable and x is the independent variable because you can vary the value of x while the value of y will always depend on the value of x. Similar to this case, the pivot variables, the pivot variables, which is the x1, x3, and x4, they are not the free variables, which means that their value will be on the will, will be on the left hand side. And on the right hand side will be the non-pivot variables, which is the x2 and x5. So 
using this analogy, you can see that you can express the x1, x3, and x4 on the left hand side in the form of x2 and x5. So let's consider x5 equivalent to t and x2 equal to s. So these t and s are the free variable or the parameters. And looking on the reduced row action form here, I can see that the x4 is corresponding to 0. So x4 is 0. Well, for the second row, it's actually x3 plus x5 equals 0. So we have x3 plus x5 equals 0 here. And we move x5 to the other side because we know that x5 is the free variable. So x3 is equivalent to negative x5, which is negative t. Similarly, for the first row here, we have the x1 plus x2 plus x5 equivalent to 0. So you move the x2 and x5, which are the free non non-pivot variables, the free variables here, to the right hand side. So x1 is equivalent to negative s and negative t. So you rewrite everything here, x2, x3, x2, x1, x2, x3, and x4, and x5 here. So the last step is actually to write it in the vector form. So you put everything in the vector column vector form and on the other side is actually their associated solution here so x1 corresponding to negative s negative t x2 corresponding to s and so on now you can factorize out the common the factorize the parameter which is the s and t here so the first one will be the factorization of s free variable or the parameter here and the column vector here is actually corresponding to the parameter or the scalar in front of s. So for the first case, we have a negative 1 in front of s, so we put a negative 1 here. Second one, we have the 1 in front of s. The third x3, we don't have, we, we, we don't express x3 in the form of s, so this should be 0, and the following on x4 is 0, and x5 is 0. On the other hand, we have another three variables here, which is the t here, so we factorize it out, and the parameters or the scalar in front of the t is negative 1 for x1, we don't have t for the second x2, so it's 0, and we have a negative 1 here, 0 and 1 here. So s and t are free variables, and their values are their values will be decided based on your assumption, which means that they are scalar, they are scalars. And the two column vectors here, they're actually the basis for the system. So u1 and u2. And since we have two bases for this system of linear equations, now how many dimensions does this system of linear equations have? We'll try to link it with the lessons here. So to sum up from this interpretation, I can write it in this way, x column vector represented by the x1, x2 until x5 equivalent to s is the parameter, a scalar parameter multiplied with u1 is actually the basis and plus t u2 which is the u2 is the basis for the second the second basis. So does it look familiar with the previous lesson where you express a new vector in the form of k1 is a scalar multiplied with the u1 is the basis plus k2 is a scalar and u2 is the basis. So these two are actually similar. So your exercise now is to find the basis for and the dimension of the solution space of the homogeneous system given here. So you try to follow the four steps mentioned in this example. The first is identify the pivot column and then identify the free variables and then you solve it this homogeneous system by putting all the variables the non -pivot, the pivot variables on the left hand side and the non pivot variables on the right hand side then you can assume a parameters for the non pivot variables or the free variables here and the last step is to put them into the column vectors and you factorize out the parameter here you should end up with four with three bases here the first one is v1 equivalent to 93 1 0, 0, 0 and something and so on is actually in the column vector form but when you write it, you can write it in the row vector form. So if you have three bases here, how many dimensions you have? 